Imagine you are walking down the street when you see an interesting shop. You decide to walk in and check it out, and after a few steps, the owner approaches. You owe me a hundred dollars, he says. What? you reply. What do you mean? You haven't broken anything. You've only walked inside a few feet. It costs a hundred dollars to enter, he informs you. That's the store policy. Confused, you decide just to turn around and walk out. After all, this policy isn't posted anywhere. If it had been, you certainly would not have agreed to it, and never would have gone in the store. As you turn to leave, he starts screaming that you owe him, and that he will call the police if you don't pay up. Undeterred, you walk away, deciding never to go near that store again. Now, let's imagine a young, attractive woman you know asks you for help with something. Say she needs to move that weekend. You agree and spend that Saturday lugging boxes and furniture. When you're done, she springs for the beer and pizza before thanking you for your help and wishing you a good evening. That night, you grumble online about how nice a guy you were, helping her with the move, and yet she still won't sleep with you. Notice any similarities? You are the shop owner. You set the price of admission, never communicated it to her beforehand, and never got an agreement of the price from her. Yet, you feel as though she owes you nonetheless, even though she would never have agreed to your terms had she known them. Dr. Robert Glover, in his 2003 book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, calls this a covert contract. You kept your end of the contract and feel resentful when she doesn't keep hers. Yet, despite the absurdity of this scenario, it is nonetheless quite common. Men frequently believe that simply being a nice guy is by itself going to earn them sex. When it doesn't, they often grumble that there's no point to being a nice guy if it isn't getting them what they want. When you think about that mentality, though, they aren't being nice at all. They aren't truly acting out of kindness. They're trying to make a purchase. A lot of them don't seem to understand that acts of kindness aren't done because you want something from the other person. They're done for their own sake. And so, when their attempts at using their niceness as a dating tactic don't pan out, they come to the conclusion that women don't want nice guys. Instead, they reason, women must like jerks who mistreat them. Sadly, there are many such examples of women in unhealthy and even abusive relationships, but it's a myth that women seek these out. The majority of women really do like nice guys. What they don't like is when guys only pretend to be nice as a ploy to passive-aggressively trap people into giving them what they want. So no, the answer is not to be a jerk either. The answer is, instead of being a nice guy, be a good man. Do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, and not because you want to trick people into liking you. That will never work. Of course, that leaves open the question, what should you do? Well, that's simple. If you get to know someone and discover that you're interested in them, say so. Yes, that is perfectly okay. If they feel the same way, you're golden. Just remember that if they don't, all you can do is accept it. After all, why would you want to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't feel the same way about you as you feel about them? In the long run, the best you can do is keep being a good person. Do volunteer work, join a charity walk, work in your community. After all, Doing things for others has the added side benefit of giving you a chance to meet a lot of new people. And just maybe, one of those will be the one for you.